So let me take Warren Buffett, for example. And to be totally frank, I'm not his biggest fan. Oh, alternatives have a future, that, and they are the future over time. But you can't change the world, the base of the world. I mean, you've got 260 million vehicles on the road or whatever number it is in the United States, and I don't know how many around the world. And they're not changing what they use tomorrow. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the average age of the American vehicle, the auto, I think is 11 to 12 years, something like that. And, and so the world can't change dramatically. And, and if anybody thinks you can change energy sources 10% in a year, it, it, it mm -hmm. just doesn't work that way. And, and uh, uh, But the world is going in the right direction in terms of, of, of working toward uh, minimization of carbon. Speaking of those cars, I mean, look at Tesla and what Elon Musk is doing. I mean, yeah. that kind of is a revolution, right? Well, it's, it's an important change, but if you guessed on the penetration of electric cars, let's say we say so 17 million or something a year in, in 2030 when I'll be 100, uh, and I would say that I'd be surprised if more than a third of those would be electric. Well, that's two thirds of them aren't, plus all the ones. And so, of the total car, of the total vehicles on the road, it still might be 10% electric tops or something like that worldwide. I mean, you can't change this mass of of, of transportation. Uh, you can't change it in a year. It is changing and should change. But but in terms of just the math of 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 replacing, if, if we said we're going to junk all the cars we have, well, you know, the economy would stop. I mean, we can't produce them, we couldn't replace them. What do you think of Elon Musk, though? If you met him, and would you invest in Tesla? <laughs> well, I think you're trying to bait me a little bit. I don't know, I'm just asking you. You can say no, no, no and no, or no, yes, listen, yes, He's done yes. some remarkable things. Okay. He's done some remarkable things. And have you met him? Oh, yeah, he's, he, uh, he joined the Giving Pledge uh, mm -hmm. some years ago. That, I've only met him once or twice, but but uh, yeah, that's it. I've, I've talked with him, but not for quite a while. And would you invest in Tesla? No. <laughs> okay. Elon Musk says that Tesla will start to offer insurance for its cars and can price it better than a typical insurance company because of the data it collects from all the vehicles on the road. You've talked about the threat of autonomous vehicles on the insurance business, but what about the threat to Geico of automobile companies themselves getting into the insurance business? And on a very similar topic, Tesla recently announced that they're shifting to an online-only sales model, and several traditional auto dealerships are also reducing their property holdings as car buyers increasingly use smartphones and the internet to shop for cars. What does this portend for Berkshire Hathaway Automotive? Yeah, uh, actually General Motors had a company for a long time called Motors Insurance Company, and, and various companies have tried it. I would say that uh, uh, the success of of the insurance company of the auto companies getting into the insurance business are probably about as likely as the success of the insurance companies getting into the auto business. Uh, it, 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 uh, I worry much more about progressive than all of the auto company possibilities that I could see in terms of getting the insurance business. It's, it's not an easy business uh, at all. And uh, uh, I would bet against any company in the auto business being any kind of, a, uh, of an unusual success. The idea of using telematics in terms of studying, people, studying people's driver's habits, that's, that's spreading quite quite uh, widely and uh, uh, it is an important it is important to have data on how people drive how hard they brake how much they swerve all kinds of things uh, so I don't doubt the value of the data but I don't think that the the auto companies will have any any advantage to that I don't think they'll make money in the insurance business the uh, using the internet to shop for cars is like you know using the internet for shopping for everything it's another competitor and uh, uh, there's no question that people will look for better ways. Now, the gross margin on new cars, on new cars, is about six percent or thereabouts. So there's 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 not lots of room in the game, but but that's 
that will be a method and that will sell some cars and that there are, you know, it, it's, it's, it's another competitor. But, uh, but I don't think it, it destroys the auto dealer who takes good care of the customers and is, is there to service the customers. And no, uh, it, it, it's, not a, it's not an overwhelming threat, but it's obviously something that's going to be around and will sell some cars. Well, if you look at the leading candy bars, for example, for the last 50 years, I think you'll find Snickers on top, and then you got M&Ms, you got two types, so they don't combine the penis with the, the, the other ones, but I think they're number two and four, and you know, uh, Hershey's in there, number three, or something of the sort. Yeah, uh, I can't take them on. I don't, th <laughs> I don't think Eli should take them on. You know, <laughs> they have moats. When you go into a, a drugstore, a 7-Eleven or something, and you say, I would like a Snickers bar, and the owner says, oh, I've got something, uh, the musk bar at, at, at 10 cents off the Snickers bar. You say, give me the Snickers. And if he doesn't give you the Snickers, you go across the street and buy the Snickers. Uh, the uh, brands, brands are moats, I mean, obviously. And, 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 and if you try to, you know, this, this product is selling you know, uh, to hundreds of millions of people who want Coca-Cola. If you say, I'll sell you something for two cents less, or I've got some celebrity's name on it. They actually, uh, Richard Branson tried virgin cola in the United States about 15 or 20 years ago. Uh, and a million others have been tried. So uh, I, I don't really have the same urge to produce automobiles that he apparently has to <laughs> produce candy, but I don't, I don't suggest that he take on Snickers. You're taking me literally and stepping away from the real story here, which is kind of this war of words between you and Charlie and Elon. And I just want, do you even know Elon Musk? I've, I've, never, I've never said anything negative about Elon. I mean, you know, you're baiting me a little bit to do it. But, I am. But, uh, but <laughs> I've, I've never, you know, I, I, people like his car and everything, but, uh, uh, but somebody mentioned that now he's talking about financing. Uh, something this morning about that. I, 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 I thought I heard that earlier. Yes, bit. well, actually, Warren, uh, Andrew just read some headlines where it looked like they may be Tesla may be going back to market to to pick up some additional financing. I'm not entirely sure. Well, all I heard what, was the all I heard was the headline. That's what I call a counter revelation. I mean, Charlie, you know, because I think it was just a few days ago they said they wouldn't need financing. Uh, it's, it, but you know, he's he's trying something to improve. A, a product, and I, I salute him for that. And the American public will decide whether it's a success, and 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 it's not easy, you know. It's a lot. Of, it's probably easier to develop a new car than to compete with Snickers. Uh, but some products have terrific boats. You know, probably Elmer's glue does. You know, WD-40. I mean, there, you, know, you can. There's just certain things that you are not in, much inclined to be dissatisfied with, and see. And I would say that, incidentally, that the that the iPhone. Uh, you know, has a terrific moat. I mean, people that have an iPhone, uh, uh, or maybe have some other phone, but they they want to continue with the product that they've got. They want they want the new version. It's just easier for them. They've they learned how to do everything, and their life's built around it and all of that. And moats are very useful. Costco has a moat in people's mind. I mean, you know, Amazon can raise the price of Prime, you know, twenty percent, and you can't do that unless you've built something within that image of the Amazon Prime that's based on reality that you're going to get a lot for your money and you're going to want to use it. And then you can raise prices $20. But if you're selling, you know, you're selling some commodity product, you can't do that. You need a moat. Elon Musk this week on his Tesla earnings call said the following, quote, I think moats are lame. They are like nice in a sort of quaint vestigial way. And if your only defense against invading armies is a moat, you will not last long. What matters is the pace of innovation. That is the fundamental determinant of competitiveness, unquote. So Warren, it seems the world has changed. Business is getting more competitive, pace of innovation, technology is impacting everything. Is Elon right? Let me well, add to that one, Warren. Elon says a conventional moat is quaint. And that's true of a puddle of water. And he says that the best moat would be to have a big competitive position. And that is also right. You know, it's, a, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Warren does not intend to build an actual moat. <laughs> <laughs> I 
even though they're quaint. Yeah. <laughs> There's certainly a great, mem a great number of businesses. This has always been true, but it does seem like it. Uh, the pace has accelerated and so on in recent years. There's been uh, more moats that have been become susceptible to invasion uh, than, than seemed to be the case earlier. But, but there's always been the attempt to do it. And there, here and there, there are probably uh, uh, places where the moat is as strong as ever. But certainly, uh, you can work at, certainly should be working at improving your own moat and defending your own moat all the time. And, and uh, uh, Elon may turn things upside down in, in some areas. Uh, I don't think he'd want to take us on in candy, but... but <laughs> and we've got some other businesses that when it's so easy that... that uh, uh, you can... Uh, you can look at something like uh, Granimals out there in the other room, and, and uh, it, it won't be technology that takes takes away the business and, and, and grantables and maybe something else that catches the young kid's fantasy or something, but uh, there, are, there are some pretty good moats around. Being the low-cost producer, for example, is a terribly important moat. And something like GEICO, uh, uh, technology has really not brought down the cost that much. And, and uh, I think... I think our position is there are a couple of companies that have costs as low as ours, but among big com big companies, we are a low-cost producer, and that is not bad when you're selling an essential item. Okay, Greg. Apple has been suggested by some analysts who are pretty smart that they should get into the electric vehicle business and maybe do so by buying Tesla. You and Charlie Munger, your vice chair, did this years ago with BYD buying electric vehicle and electric battery company. Um, would you suggest that Apple get into, or would you support it if they bought well, Tesla? Well, I would support what Tim, Tim Cook does, but I, I think... I think it would be a very poor idea to get into the auto business. It's not an easy business. And incidentally, the, the auto business is different than some. If, if, if you're a premier with Google on search or you're a premier you know, with movies on Netflix, whatever it be, there's a huge first mover and size and, you know, and, and, and network effect and all that working for you. You can win an auto one year and you lose the next. I mean, you've got a dozen big companies out there with resources, they're going to keep coming, they copy what you do, people move from one year to another, you don't worry about the fact that you know your whole life is on the iPhone as opposed to, you don't want your whole life to be in one car or something. It's not, it's not a, it does not give you a permanent advantage. The always colorful Elon Musk, the CEO, uh, got into a little trouble recently. If one of your CEOs did an Elon Musk type of tweet, I'm going private. Of course, they wouldn't go private, yeah. but uh, they revealed something they shouldn't have. How would you have handled that? Well, I think I think what you do if you misspeak, and uh, I can do it with you or somebody. You know, I mean, if you misspeak, uh, you correct it immediately. And if you've got a stock that's trading like crazy, you come on three minutes later and and don't say and say I misspoke when I said lending secured. I meant to say I really think I can get funding. I mean, there's something. Of the Bitcoin. Sort of you and Charlie have told Fox Business and made news calling it rat poison, rat poison squared. Has anything changed to make you take a second look? It will come to a bad ending. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Want to learn more about millionaires? Watch these two videos.